because that's our thing, right? Start on time, finish on time, have a great time. <laughs> and, Spot on. And hi to Linda, who's watching the recording in the future. Hope you're feeling better. <laughs> and anybody else who's watching the recording. So, Andre, what did you learn this week? Oh, he of the sexy hats. Uh, I've learned that uh, Mozilla seems to be the preferred web browser for sensitive uh, uh, transactions or, or where, where the privacy is uh, important. So I'm sort of shifting all my uh, passwords and login details and my bookmarks to from, I, I'm a, I do have a Mac, so I've been using Safari in the past or a bit of Chrome as well, a bit of whatever suits it at the time. And I'm shifting it all to Mozilla Firefox. It's an open source platform. It seems to be uh, the privacy of data is very important to those guys and uh, it's open source. So mm. I did some research and yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Interesting. Interesting. So is there anything about Chrome that particularly worried you? Because, I mean, Safari is obviously a Mac thing, whereas Chrome can be used on every system, on phones and com every computer. So. I, I, uh, I, Chrome is owned by Google, so I think that's also the sort of weak point. And uh, uh, Mozilla is open source, so yeah. they do have a great community contributing. And also, uh, the, the privacy is very important to them. So mm -hmm. that's why the way they build the browser is to protect the privacy of the user. Yeah, yeah. Especially when doing financial transactions, in that case, is more important than just what friends we follow or who does follow yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. I, I, I hadn't heard that, but obviously, you know, if something's open source, then it actually makes it more trustworthy. Uh, like I did a post on mm. Facebook today about how Facebook took your data and, and sent it off to Cambridge Analytica. Yeah, totally. Facebook, Facebook tracks you even when you close down the app and you're going onto another browser and looking at other things. Facebook will still track you. Um, and if people knew that was in there, then obviously they'd get very upset or they'd, they'd take it out. So it's good to have good to have open source. So mm. there you go. And another thing, another thing on top of that, if I can, that uh, the phones are listening all the time. Basically, I, I do have an iPhone, and uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Hi Siri, hey Siri. So hey Siri, basically listening all the time. She just yeah, wakes yeah. up when I say hey Siri. But they are they obviously have to listen all the time yeah, to all yeah. our conversations we're having. Yeah, I, I turned off the hey Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned off mine, so they're only, they're only like, like I have to hold it down for a second, and then get it to, okay. to start listening. But um, yeah, it's it's mm. good that Apple's now got a little um, this little orange dot that pops up on there yeah. when it's listening or when the camera's activated. Um, so, but yeah. again, <laughs> yeah, it's it's always listening. That's that's the interesting thing. So you got to make sure you don't give out any top secret information, credit card numbers or tax file numbers or anything like that. So very cool. I, I have a, a few friends who have been using Brave browser. Um, and okay. I'm not sure of, you know, whether it's open source or, or whatever. Um, but with, with Brave browser, you actually get paid. So, you know, where these oh. people are paying, you know, I, I used to run Facebook ads and Google ads back in the, the early days. Um, and I'd pay, you know, like ten dollars for someone to see my ad, um, but you don't get any of that money. You know, it just goes straight to the company. Uh, but using Brave browser, yep. you actually get paid. You can turn ads on or you can turn them off. And if you're turning them on, then the money actually goes through to you. Obviously, they keep a little All bit. Right. They might get twenty percent for them for themselves, um, but you're actually earning these Brave cryptocurrencies, the tokens, and um, there's there's always a, a demand for them because the company has to buy them to actually run the ads and then give the ads to you. So it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you're, interesting. you're going to see ads anyway. You may as well get paid to see the ads. So yeah, absolutely. I'll get into cool. it. Very cool. Thank you. And is there anything that you want to learn this week? Interestingly enough, my investment uh, did quite well over the last fortnight yeah. <laughs> in a crypto. Yeah. And, uh, the question that pops in my head, what would be the best way to uh, uh, minimize the tax, of course, 
and also just to transfer it from my uh, hardware wallet to an exchange and transfer it to cash or to or let's say I my exchange is SwiftX and they do have a limit fifty thousand dollars a day for withdrawal. Yeah, and uh, that's not not a lot. If if the if the outcome goes to the moon, fifty thousand dollars a day is not a lot. You can spend two months, you know, <laughs> purchasing yeah. a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, is there any are there any other exchanges they do they don't have such a limit, or is there any other way of uh, of uh, converting uh, crypto to uh, to to cash or to something that can be used in a in this uh, in this world? Yeah, I mean, Let's say exactly for property investment. Stable, coil, stable coins. Um, so I, I have some some clients who they invested into a, a little tiny crypto for like a fraction of a cent back in 2016. Yes. They put in like ten thousand dollars. What millions of these freaking coins? Um, and then when the boom came, you know, 2017, this thing went up to like six million dollars. And these guys were just going, oh, my God, this is fantastic. Yeah, we're millionaires. Um, but then, of course, the crash started to happen. And the crash is happening in slow motion. So it's going from like six million to five and a half to five. And they're going, oh, my God, we've got to get our money out because it's going down. Um, yes. And like the same, same thing. I think the limit was like $20,000 a day or $50,000 a day. So they were trying to pull out money like every day. And meanwhile, yes. this thing was going down. They couldn't get their money out, out fast enough. But back then there wasn't the stable coins. So I, I would suggest you could use the stable coins. And you know, if, if you think that's as high as it's going to go, um, or you've, you've made sufficient money, you're gonna retire and you know, travel the world on a yacht somewhere, then you can switch across into like um, TUSD or TAUD um, so that it's stable. Because it's always worth one US dollar or one Aussie dollar or one Hong Kong dollar. Ah, uh, that's what stable coin is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just right. do dollar for dollar. So there's there's TUSD, which is always worth one US dollar. TAUD, which is always worth one Aussie dollar. Um, and I can convert it instantly, basically. Pretty well. I can yeah. convert it. Yeah. All right. So, some some okay. of the exchanges will still give you that limit, um, simply for money laundering purposes. So. Mm. Like if I put a million dollars into an exchange, transferred that million dollars to some friend of mine in the Middle East, and then he wanted to withdraw the million dollars, someone's going to look at that and go, these guys are buying drugs or they're buying weapons or something like that, you know? So yeah. it's part of the, the anti-money laundering service. Some of the exchanges, when I first joined them, they had like, okay, you're on a $1,000 limit. And then when you verify yourself with your driver's license, they lift the limit to say $5,000. And then when you verify yourself with a mm -hmm. passport, then they list lift the limit to $50,000 or $20,000 or something like that. Um, so the, the exchanges are trying to say they're protecting you um, and that's okay because a lot of the illicit business is still done in cash. So yep. I'd, I'd be thinking yeah, if you if you got the money, you could use some of the services like the CRO card, um, MCO card to put it onto like a Visa card put it into stable coins, you can spend that anywhere that accepts cash. I mean, there's nothing wrong with buying a house on your Visa card. Um, can you do that? Why not? I've bought a car on a Visa card. Um, <laughs> so if, if, they'll accept, if they'll accept the payment, um, then there's not, nothing Actually, wrong. Actually, I did hear some, that some real estate in, in Sydney, they accept Bitcoin. So that would yeah. solve the problem. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not an advocate of, of spending your, your crypto anytime at all, ever. Um, yes. I, I think it's, if, if you've got a good investment that you can buy and hold on to, and let's face it, like Bitcoin was, was $6,000 12 months ago, and now it's nudging $70,000, or it was a bit higher a couple of days ago. Yeah. Um, and with all the currency printing that's going on from the central banks, I expect the currency, the paper currency to devalue and the Bitcoin price to keep going up. So let's say Bitcoin hits $100,000, you know, in the next six months, would you sell it and then go and buy yourself a nice car? Or would it be more sensible to say, I'm gonna take a loan against my Bitcoin, borrow that money, go and buy the fancy car. And then meanwhile, if the price of Bitcoin keeps going up and up and up. Absolutely, and up, absolutely. You've still got your Bitcoin. 
So Celsius yes. will give you a loan against your Bitcoin. I think they charge about five or six percent, uh, which is pretty reasonable. And you can use that cash for anything. So, you know, a couple of years ago, you were paying five percent interest on a house. I think you were paying about twelve or thirteen percent interest on a car loan. But they're just like, you know, five or six percent. That's all they charge, and you get to keep your crypto. You get to keep any possible gains yes. in there. So. Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, Celsius. Like it's in degree, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, um, and that can be same. That can be basically used for the property as well. I would imagine. Yeah, you can use you can use the cash for anything. Yeah. Um, some people borrow yeah. against their crypto, take the cash, and use the cash to buy more crypto. Some people you know, diver diversifying, right? Because if you've got say so say the crypto thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, and now that thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin in the last twelve months has become twenty thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin, but you're all in Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin goes down, obviously you're upset. So you could borrow against that Bitcoin because if you sell it, you've got to pay tax, right? Uh, you borrow uh, against that Bitcoin and then diversify into Ethereum and Chainlink and Polkadot and whatever else. Uh, and then course. you've got a bit more diversification. So, so in terms of loans, we are not limited to major banks. Let's no, say no, how, no. home loans or stuff. Oh, no. right. The Cel Celsius perfect. calls themselves the unbank. Because the guy, the guy who started it, you know, he got into crypto a long time ago. He's, he was the guy who invented the voice over the internet protocol. So this, this thing that we're actually talking on now, like Zoom uses it, Skype uses it, all these other things use <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, VoIP. <laughs> he, in, he invented VoIP um, back in 1995 and then licensed it to all these other companies and became a billionaire. And he was looking at crypto and going, it's all really good that I can buy a, a, a Bitcoin and I can send a Bitcoin to one of my mates. That's all fine but it'll never replace the banks until we can actually borrow against it and you know, lend. Yeah. So that's what he decided to do. So Celsius, I, I think was one of the first in the DeFi space. We've been in it um, through Boston coin. We've been in it for probably two, three years now. Um, and now all these other uh -huh. DeFi's have, have come out. Um, but yeah, we, we got the, we, we bought the coins at like six cents, I think. Miliani will correct me on that. Uh, we bought them about six cents, and now they're up to like you know two or three dollars. So, wow. yeah. And 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 the the great thing is like when they when they bought the coin out, they actually distributed the coin out to the marketplace. Um, and every time they pay interest, they have to go back to the marketplace and buy it. And the more people who deposit into Celsius, the more interest they have to pay. So the more coins they have to buy. So every week they, the company goes to the market and buys the coins. It keeps the price going up and up and up because they're always buying it every yeah, single yeah. week. So yeah. they've got about $10, $10 billion under management at the moment. And it's growing very <laughs> rapidly. So yeah, have, have a look on the Krillionaire website um, because there's a, mm -hmm. there's a few reviews on the blog of different, um, different non-bank lenders. Uh, rather, okay. rather than actually selling if you don't want to sell. But obviously, if you do want to sell, you can use one of those as well. So. Yeah, I don't wish to. Ideally, I just uh, exploring the options. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. And uh, tax-wise, uh, I mean, you're a great advocate of uh, optional <laughs> tax. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's a whole other discussion uh, for another day. Um, All right. There, okay. There are, there are plenty of structures and, and ways of doing things, um, depending on what the tax liability is going to be. Like, if, if you're going to pay, you know, if you, if you owe the government like three grand tax, then just pay the tax. You know, walk away. Yeah. But sure. if if there is a potential that you're going to have to pay like a million dollars in tax, or even say fifty thousand dollars in tax, that's when you go. Okay, it's going to be actually cheaper to set up some sort of structure, or maybe you know, if you're gonna be paying a million dollars in tax shit, it's actually cheaper to become a citizen of another country, you know, like Singapore or Indonesia or, or somewhere yes. where they're paying like 5% tax or less. Um, that's a possibility. But th those things are- And are all this can be- yeah. yeah, sorry. And all this can be sorted afterwards. So I don't have to, I mean, potentially, eventually, whatever, yeah. I don't have to really prepare for that scenario now. Everything can be sorted later. Ideally, um, it's, it's, it's best to plan the trip before you go on the trip. You know, most people spend more time planning a weekend away than they do planning out their, their tax year or their financial future or anything. Um, so I, ideally, you want to do it beforehand. But as, as long as you, you get it done, 
before the end of the financial year because once once it turns over like in australia it's 30th of june in america it's 15th of april wherever country you are you are in but once you get to that point then there's nothing you can do you know yeah um, it's, it's, it's in terms of withdrawals closed. or in terms of anything uh, in, in terms of changing the the tax liabilities like you know okay, i obviously so don't want someone to call me up you know three days before the end of the financial year and go oh my god like <laughs> i've got a, i'm going to have a million dollar tax bill tomorrow what do i do that's not a good plan but if they come to you like you know three months beforehand then we go cool there's actually some things that we can put in place okay so. sure right. sure perfect so if i'm not let's say planning withdrawal yeah let's say if it's just a long-term investment so it's if it's in, then I don't have to worry about it. If I'm thinking of withdrawal, then we can have a discussion, chat, and a plan. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so again, like just, just assuming that, you know, last, last March when the pandemic hit, you bought one Bitcoin for $6,000. As of right now, that Bitcoin is worth around about $70,000, $80,000. So if you sold mm. it or if you withdrew, then you would have, you know, you would trigger a, a tax event. Well, yes. It would be a big tax liability. Um, but if you borrowed against it, you didn't sell it. So there's no, there's no tax implications mm, if you borrowed yeah. against it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, and if that, that Bitcoin was owned in a structure rather than being owned by you, then that's a way to, to mitigate the tax liability as well. So, But it's too late probably for that if it's been purchased already. If it's been purchased already and you haven't sold it, then you haven't triggered any capital, capital tax event. Okay, and in terms of ownership, can you shift the ownership? Uh, no? Potentially, potentially. As I say, okay. that's, that's a discussion for another day. Okay, so, so, so I didn't want to hijack yeah, yeah, the... that. That's more about yeah. um, tax structures and, and asset protection structures and things like that rather than mm -hmm. about crypto. So, but, um, okay. ha happy, happy to have that chat with you on another channel. Of course. So, um, what else do we need that's to know? It's an option. Oh yeah, there's always options. There's always options. As, as you say, you, you've known me for many years, mate. You know that I, yeah. tax is optional. Uh, one, <laughs> one of the first things I, I learned um, from my millionaire mentors, my rich dads. So yeah, it's all, there's always a possibility, but once you get to like two days before tax time, then you're kind of out of luck. Yeah. Yeah. So pl plan, plan early. And, and everybody who's listening to this call should be planning ahead because you know, there's, some of the smartest people in the world, the investment managers from JP Morgan and Grayscale and MicroStrategy and these guys who are, who are buying literally billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, these guys are stock analysts and they're looking at Bitcoin the same way they look at stocks. And they're saying, okay, Bitcoin, we reckon it's gonna be over 100,000 know, by the end of the year. Some people are saying 150,000, some people are saying 300,000 in two years time. Yep. So anybody who's just starting out and going, I'm just going to buy $20 worth of Bitcoin. What if these guys are wrong? Or what if one of your friends puts you onto one of these coins that goes up by more than a million percent? You know, it's a good idea to have some sort of strategy because, you know, best case scenario is you put $100 into a coin and you lose your 100 bucks. And you go, okay, that was obviously a crap coin that I bought. Doesn't matter. If that's only 100 bucks. It's not going to change my life. Worst case scenario is you put a hundred bucks into a coin and it turns up to be three million. And then you go, holy shit, this is going to change my life. <laughs> you know, this is going to give yes, me totally. all sorts of issues and dramas. What do I do? How do I protect myself? How do I protect myself from the tax man? How do I protect myself from hackers and crackers and, and God knows what else? I, yeah. I, one of my friends who, uh, you know how you turn on your two factor authentication on your phone. So yeah. when you log into an exchange, it sends you a text message. Um, so Mick was out playing golf and, you know, had his phone turned off for a couple of hours and all fine. He's playing a game of golf. Meanwhile, someone knew that he had Bitcoin and they had ported his number, like, you know, walked into a phone shop and went, oh, look, I've lost my phone. This is my phone number. Can you give me a new SIM card? No way. So they got his new SIM card with his number on it, went to the exchange. It sent a text message to his phone, which they now had. And they walked out with 40 Bitcoin. Now, do the math on 40 Bitcoin at like sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 He just played golf for a couple of hours and came out and went, 
holy shit, someone's stolen 40 Bitcoin out of my account. So oh, there's, there's potential for things like that. As I say, like if you lose $100, that's probably best case scenario. But when you start to talk, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars, then you've really got to make sure you've got all your protections in place. So he, yeah. he has now learned a very valuable lesson after losing 40 Bitcoin. He's learned the lesson that you can actually contact your phone, phone company and you can put a PIN number on it. So if you do lose your phone and you need to replace your SIM card, you can actually give them the secret password or the secret PIN and they know it's you and they'll issue you another, another SIM card. But if anybody mm. doesn't have that, they obviously won't be able to steal your number. So, yeah. and that's something I didn't know. I didn't know that. So, yeah, yeah. I would not expect that. <laughs> obviously, it's hardware, hardware wallet is the way to go, I guess. Yeah, but you, you think, you know, there's, there's so many people who have made so much money out of cryptocurrency in the last, you know, even in the last 12 months, let alone the last three or five years. Um, so there's, there's going to be the criminal element sneaking around and going, hey, look, I've heard of this Andre guy. He's, you know, he's been in crypto for two or three years. He's probably got a bit of money. Let's see if we can crack into his exchange or whatever. So yeah, mm. always have the two-factor authentication on. Always, always. Absolutely. Um, and you can put a, a PIN number on your port so no one can port your phone. There you go. Un unexpected Absolutely. lesson. <laughs> Oh, of course, uh, but no, no yeah. one that twice a day. <laughs> and obviously, you know, you've got your, your seed phrases and things like that. Like I, I was very silly in the very early days because um, when, when they said, oh, to open a wallet, you need to write down these seed phrases. So I wrote them down on a piece of paper. And then on the next screen, it says, okay, type those words back in. And I thought it was one of those things like you've got to prove you're, you're not a robot, you know, like click on the things that have a traffic light. So after I typed the seed phrases back in and it let me into the wallet, I chucked that bit of paper away. Thought, I'll never need that shit again and chucked it out. <laughs> so I, I did that twice on two different wallets. I chucked the seed phrase away um, and, it's, and it's gone. But other people obviously, you know, I've learned my lesson. Other people are, are a bit smarter than me. So keep their seed phrases written down. But, you know, if that's on a piece of paper and it's in your house, what if your house burns down? You know, and you're sure you've got sprinkler systems and alarms and that sort of stuff. But more things are destroyed by the water than by the fire. So paper will just turn to mush in water. So get those seed phrases on paper, laminate them and stick them somewhere. Um, you know, maybe have, have one stuffed inside your car as well as one inside your house or I don't know, that's, get a, yeah, safe, a safe that's fireproof. You can buy safes, safes at the hardware store at Bunnings for about $30, $40. Uh, yep. They're not that expensive. And if, if your Bitcoin is starting to be worth a few thousand dollars, then it's worth spending $30 to $50 on protecting it. So. True. Super. Very good. Very good. Muliani, do you have any questions, comments, thoughts? Correct me on what the current Celsius price is. Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your job to know the Celsius price, so you can you can tell people when I'm just shooting from the hip and making stuff up. Actually, the Celsius view in Brazil is really great, great application. You have earned a lot from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Boston Coin, we've made like over ten thousand percent. So yeah, Jeremy has earned a lot from the Celsius. You should try it, Andre. Yeah, I, I, I love Celsius, and I, I talk about Celsius all the time. I interviewed the the marketing uh, business development manager at Celsius. They didn't even send me a Celsius T-shirt. You know, I'm just going to keep mentioning Celsius until they give me a free T-shirt. So, okay, you, you, you can do ads for us now. Uh, maybe I'm not pretty enough. Maybe you have to get a, a T-shirt in Muliani size. She's prettier than me. <laughs> Next time when you met the team again, please tell them to open the Celsius in for Indonesian ID. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. That, that might be a government thing. So, yeah, maybe they can work on it because I can access the Celsius from here. Yeah. They don't even have my ID. In, Indonesia's <laughs> got a whole mess of other things. I mean, when, when I was living in Bali, you know, Uber was banned. Airbnb was banned, you know, and the, the Bluebird <laughs> taxis weren't allowed into, into the airport and that sort of stuff. 
Um, I, I remember when, when Joko came in as the, as the Prime Minister or the President, and um, he said, if we can double the number of people paying tax, then we'll be able to balance the budget. And I'm like, well, how many people pay tax now? And he said, well, there's 2% of Indonesians who are registered taxpayers. And he wanted yeah. to make that 4% of people who are registered taxpayers. So there you go, Andre. If you want to go to a country where, like, you know, the tax rate is totally optional, 98% of people in Indonesia don't pay any tax. They're not even registered as taxpayers. <laughs> not even. So, yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, he's uh, like... classic. Classic. If we, if we can get that to 4%, if we can get 4% of the population paying tax, we'll balance the budget. No problems. Like Beautiful. in Australia, they've got 99% of people paying tax and they still can't balance the budget. It's crazy. So, yeah, I, I, I can talk to Celsius, but otherwise, Moliani, I would suggest uh, VPN. Um, if you've got a Chinese passport or, or passport in another ID that's not Indonesian, then use that. There's, there's some people that I know who are, who are applying for dual citizenship. So they're getting, because um, you, you can get citizenship of, countries like Malta in Europe and Lithuania and some of these places uh, simply by depos depositing $10,000 into a bank account in that country and saying, well, I'm not coming over now because COVID's a whole thing, but I intend to go and live here sometime. And of course, if you get a passport that'll let you into Malta, then you, the whole European Union is open for you. So you might go, oh, I'm going to go and live in Italy or, or Spain or, you know, whatever. Um, so these are some of the things that the people that I talk to are actually are actually looking at now, saying, okay, next time there's a pandemic or a black swan event, it's a lot easier to leave the country if you've got two passports, you know, uh, and for, for taxation purposes and for the cost of living and that sort of stuff, it might be a lot cheaper to live in another country that has a lower tax rate or a lower cost of living. So. Mm. Options, always options, Andre. Always options. Yeah, I recently yeah. learned that uh, there is. I'm resident of Slovakia as well. That's uh, my. Uh, that's where I was born, and uh, there is no capital gain tax on crypto. Oh, right. Okay, let's all move. <laughs> We're going with you. <laughs> so, do do I have to move? Do I, oh, I don't if, have if to you move. Do I have you've, to move? you've got a passport for a passport for Slovakia. I do have. Yeah, I do have passports. Yeah. I... Then you're then you're a citizen. Can... You might you might not be a resident for tax purposes, but that's that's something we could probably set up. We'll we'll have we'll have a chat about that. Something we'll... can be done. Something yeah, yeah, we'll get creative. If you've got a passport, you're one of the few people who may actually be allowed to fly. You know, most other yes. people are just locked down in their own country right now. So even if the state mm. borders are open, you can't leave the country unless you're a citizen of another yeah. country. So, yeah, there's, al there's always possibilities. But, you know, again, when we're talking about getting more and more and more money into crypto, um, a lot of these guys are looking at saying, okay, how do I become a dual citizen? Um, and, you know, live outside. It, all you have to do, like for Australia, you have to live outside of Australia for 180 days or 183 days or something like that. So, all right. yeah, if you spend less than six months of the year in Australia, then you're considered a non-resident for tax purposes. So, right. Yeah, but there's, there's, as I say, there's other, there's other options as well. There's, there's structures yep. and, yep. and trust and all that sort we'll of talk. stuff. Mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that. So back to the crypto. Anything else exciting happening? DeFi, NFTs. I don't know. That guy sold his his artwork for sixty million dollars or something the other day. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Good on him. Really. I mean, Van Gogh sold of what, <laughs> two paintings while he was alive? And all the other, you know, the Van Goghs change hands for like $100 billion, but where does that money go? It's not going to the artist. It's going to the previous Yeah, not, not to his own pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good on little little Mr. Beeple selling his creation for mm. $60 million, and I'm sure he'll be doing a lot more. So it'll be a status symbol to say, to say I own a Beeple. You know, I don't have a Van Gogh, but yeah, I've got a Beeple. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, if, if only I knew how to draw things, then you know definitely I'd be out there creating, <laughs> selling. Did I say rubbish? I mean artwork. I'd be creating artwork and selling it to people and, and putting that money into crypto. So, all good. 
Alrighty. So I think when I when I first started this series, um, I only booked in seven Zoom sessions um, just to see how we went. And so far, I've persevered. I've showed up for all of them. Some of you haven't, and that's okay. I know that people have had sickness and, and sick kids and death in the family and all sorts of manner of things. So if you've missed one or two, that's okay. Um, I think next week will be the last one, but we'll see. If everybody can turn up with a friend, then it's going to be a lot more fun if we've got you know, 20 people on. Um, otherwise, if we get you know, three or four people on next week, I might just cut it off and say, okay, that's it for now. Uh, anybody who wants to have a private consult, we can do that. But as far as the, the free group chats, uh, we'll leave that until the demand comes back. So, Yeah, I totally understand. I'm, I very appreciate all your efforts and the sharing knowledge. Thank you, Jeremy. Sure. And right. uh, yeah, I'll keep talking to my friends because they, they sense their potential, but as you can imagine, it takes a little while. You know, I'm sharing with them, showing them this and that. But uh, yeah. from knowing nothing to knowing a little bit, it's just a little process, but uh, they are getting there. Yeah, I, I understand. Like it's, it's very scary. Uh, if you haven't sort of been introduced to crypto and you don't know how it works and what you see on the news sometimes is like, oh my God, Bitcoin went up a thousand percent. Oh my God, Bitcoin crashed down 20%. Um, <laughs> people don't realize there are other coins and Ethereum seems to be a bit more stable and even more um, you know, vol volatile sometimes than, than Bitcoin. Um, it's, it's like the stock market. You know, there's, there's good stocks, there's rubbish stocks and there's stocks yeah. that just sort of put along really, really boring. And with the stable coins, I mean, anybody, if, you, if you've got friends who are sitting around and you know, particularly with the ones who are retirees and pre-retirees and that sort of stuff, if they've got $100,000 sitting in the bank earning 0.2%, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but they can literally use that 100000 go and buy 100000 worth of stable coins, which do not go up, do not go down. They're always the same price every single day. And they can earn 5 6 7% on those stable coins, you know? I mean, that is something that will literally change your life. You're making more than 10 times as much interest as what the bank pays. And yeah, you're not taking exactly. on any additional risk because a dollar is a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. So there's, there's so much inside the world of crypto. People just think that, you know, crypto is Bitcoin because that's the one that gets all the publicity. Yeah. But it's like thinking the entire stock market is Tesla. And it's not. You know, there's some... There's some good stocks, there's some cheap stocks, there's some bad stocks, there's some stable ones, there's some scary <laughs> ones. It's a whole new world out there. But um, yeah, do, I do encourage you to share with your friends. I think I said to you um, this afternoon, like I, I've introduced a whole bunch of people to crypto. When I, they go, oh, I'd never invest in crypto. I say, well, would you have free $5? If I gave you $5 worth of Bitcoin, would you accept it? And I'm like, oh, okay. And then once they start to see it and go the next week it's six dollars and the next week it's you know four dollars ninety one and the next week it's seven dollars and they start to understand the volatility but over yes. time it's going up and they've got a wallet and they've got a chart and they can actually look at things and they start to understand it and play with it and I mean let's face it if you give each one of your friends five dollars if you introduce them like to Coinbase or CRO you're picking up ten dollars anyway when they open a wallet and put some money <laughs> in it you get paid ten dollars. Um, and then in all likelihood in a year or two, when they come back to you, they're going to say, oh my God, that $5 that you gave me, it's now a hundred. Let me buy you a beer. So you can't lose. Yeah. You can't lose. Yep, yep, yep. So I, I gave away thousands of dollars in 2018, like literally thousands of dollars, just like $5 to anybody who actually asked me about the point. So all right. yeah. And now I've got loads of friends who all owe me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Hopefully 25 bucks from, uh, Crypto will come to you shortly because I'm just waiting for my Ruby card to be uh, to have a address validated. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the time when they when they acknowledge the referral. Yeah, the Ruby card, fantastic. That's the one I started that with. So you start getting all the all the money back every time you go spending stuff. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. You go out for dinner with ten friends, and when the bill comes, you say, "Everybody, just give me cash, and I'll pay I'll pay the bill," because three percent of it comes straight back into your pocket. So yeah. it's a thing of beauty. Thank you, Andre. You've been one of the most consistent people. And uh, thank you, Miliani. You're always consistent. And Welcome. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we get so together next before. week. Otherwise, we can have a private chat offline about some other things That's as good. well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much, man. Bye. Thanks, Jeremy. Take care. All the best. Cheers. Take care. Bye.